So that's what we're out here to do. Bring God's laws, statutes, and commandments to God's chosen people to get them out of the situations that they're in now. That's right. That's right. To stop the free HIV testing because we're keeping God's laws. We don't have to worry about that issue. You understand that? We don't have to worry about that if we keep God's laws. At ease, at ease. So what we're doing out here today is bringing the truth to our people, the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. I need to, we want to address something though. Because, um, you know, we was approached and we was told we need to walk the walk in regards to the HIV testing, right? First thing we need to do is, is find out why our people have to get HIV tested in the first place. Why our people are being afflicted. Hey, how you doing, sis? Sis, how you doing? What's your name? Patricia, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why is um, sexually transmitted diseases running rampant in our community? Because you got a bunch of irresponsible adults. Oh, you got a bunch of irresponsible adults, right? Now, when we say a bunch of irresponsible adults, is there a way that we can fix that? Yes, it is. How? Education. Education, education from what? From us. Let me show you where the education comes from, real quick, okay? You got five minutes. Come on, I got two, I got two. You got two minutes, okay. The education comes from this Bible here. Right. This is what our people have walked away from, and that's hence the reason why we're suffering from these diseases that we got to get tested from. Right. Let me show you something. Give me a book of Deuteronomy. You know what I want, 28, 15. Deuteronomy. Watch this. Watch this. Chapter 28 and verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass. Mm -hmm. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So the scriptures, hey, how you doing, brother? Brother with the white, how you doing, brother? So the scriptures telling you, shall come to pass. What's up? He said, what is that right there? What the fuck? That picture right there? All right, hold on a second. Excuse me. What's your name, brother? Kentrell. Kentrell? Kentrell. Kentrell, what we show on our people is the Bible, the truth about the Bible, right? What you see there? You, want to, you got a question about that picture? That picture right there. I'm going to ask you a question first. Who is this? That's supposed to be Jesus, right? How you doing, sis? Who is this? Man right here. You, know, you never seen this this image here hung up in the church anywhere? No, he's on your That's fine. What we're going to show you here today, brother, is that the true image of Jesus Christ Christ yeah. looks like that. Yeah. You understand? That's not him yeah, per se, but that is the, the, yeah. the most accurate depiction of Jesus Christ according to the Bible. All right, let's like bring that, that up. Picture. Give me John 7 and 38 real quick. Because what we must understand is that by us not following the true image and not, not respecting the true image of Jesus Christ, exactly, they have us brainwashed and that keeps us far from God's laws and it keeps us in the state that we're in. Right. John chapter 7 and verse 38. Right. Right. But he that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said. So we're to believe on Christ as the scripture has said, not how man talk, tells us. You understand? Read. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of his belly, out of his mind shall flow wisdom and understanding of these scriptures here. That's the rivers of living water. You understand that? But it starts with you believing in the scriptures on Christ as the scripture tells you. So what, how does the Bible subscribe, describe Christ? Okay. This, this, this is an interesting piece right here, you know? What we're going to show you. I never seen it. I'm like, I had it in my house. What we're going to show you is that the Bible does not describe Christ as this image here. This image here was given to us by our oppressors. That's right. They put it in our mind. Oh yeah, this way. This is what we want out of this. Let me show you that real quick. Get Maccabees 3 and 48. First Maccabees 3 and 48. Let me show you that real quick. Sis, I'm going to show you something about them chocolates that you're selling as well. I'm going to oh. deal with his Christ, but then we're going to deal with this chocolate. And we're going to deal with that HIV testing. I ain't forget about the point, right? Read it. First Maccabees chapter 3 and verse 48. Bring it up. And laid open the book of the law. They laid open. Our press is when you read the book of Moses, they laid open the book of the law. And laid open the book of the law. They laid open our presses. When you read the book of Maccabees, that's dealing with the Greek captivity. The Greeks, Alexander the Great, Ptolemy, all them other. Caucasians, they, they conquered the earth at some point too, right? And they laid open the book of the law. They laid open the Bible and did what? Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. They did what? Paint the likeness of their images. What you're going to understand is that when we were 
when we were when we were conquered, the heathen painted their images, right? Now I want you to now let's read what the Bible says about Jesus Christ. Hey, would you like to learn, sis? Would you like to learn? Would you like to learn? Would you like to learn? Well, guess what? We're going to read the Bible. Read that. Revelation chapter one verse one. Let it be about the all book of Revelation, chapter like 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, history. which not God gave boy. unto him okay. to show yeah. unto his servants things which must surely come to pass. It's, it's funny how it's funny how people walk up to us and hear 10 seconds of what we're teaching. Exactly. That is a spirit right there. Because if you if you sat here and listened to what we're bringing out, we are all about black lives. We are all about the salvation of our people. We are about bringing our people out of the condition that they're in. You need to understand that. This first revealed is the description of Jesus Christ to get the lies out of our people's heads. Read that. Read verse 14. Y'all full of shit. Verse 14. His hands and his hands will write like wool. Let me show you something, brother. Don't show me that. Look. This is what's full of it. This image right here is what's full of it, brother. That's what you need to understand. This image is what's full of it. Understand something, I got it, I got it. And that's what we're gonna show you. Read. As white as snow, it says Jesus Christ's head and his hairs was white like wool. It's white as snow. Is this image here white like wool? White like wool? So we're gonna see who the liars are, right? Read. And his eyes were as the flame of fire. It says Jesus Christ's eyes were as the flame of fire. So they're saying that we're liars. If does this image have eyes as the flame of fire? Why was Christ's eyes as the flame of fire? Because he drank wine in moderation. Get Genesis 49. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. It says his eyes shall be red with wine. You have a flat? It's on the fly. It's also on our website. And we have a website called Original Royalty. Today is the Sabbath. But after the Sabbath, you can go ahead and purchase a poster with that same image on it. Read. Verse 15. Uh -huh. And his feet. And his what? And his feet. Let me ask you something, brother. Your feet. Is it the same complexion as your legs? Is your legs the same complexion as your arm? Is your arms the same complexion as your face? His feet is what color? Unto fine brass, uh, as if they burned in a furnace. If you take fine brass and burn it in a furnace, what color does it come out? No. It comes out black. It comes out dark right. brown. Right? So who's lying? Who's the heretic? This image here that shows a, a, a so-called white man with, with stringy hair, or the, the image of someone with white woolly hair, and hair that's the color of brass burned in a furnace. So who's the liar? We do not learn this in our Christian church at all. That's what has our people destroyed, brother. You understand that? This is the truth right here. Get John 8 and 32. Bring it on. They, they do. Get, matter of fact, get Hosea 4 and 6. Get Hosea 4 and 6. That's the picture that they want you to believe so that you can worship their image and hate yourself. That image there has our sisters wanting to have hair like them and not as, as the Most High God. Yes, not as Jesus Christ. That right. image right there has our brothers shooting each other down in the streets every single day. Right. Right. That image does that. And we are here to bring the truth back to our people to free their minds from that nonsense. Right. Right. So that we can bring change to the so-called black community. Because right. right. ain't no change coming from the Christian church. Right. Ain't no change coming from Egyptology. Right. Ain't no change coming from all that other nonsense that our people are in. The change comes from renewing your mind according to God's laws. Right. Read. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. God's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. God's chosen people, the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native American, they're destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Read. Because... Guys reject knowledge because our people reject knowledge. What happens? I will also reject thee. Hence the reason why you see we have to go get tested for HIV now. That's right. But that's why you see us filling up the prisons. That's why you see us all in the Christian churches. That's why you see us destroying people not knowing who they are. Right. 
because they're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So what is that knowledge, Malachi? What is the knowledge that our people are destroyed from? They have never been taught the Bible this way before. They have never been taught the truth about the Bible. And that's why our people are destroyed. Read. Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. Bring it out. For the priest's lips should do knowledge. The priest's lips should do what? Keep knowledge. Yeah. And they should seek the law at his mouth. God's laws, statutes, and commandments is what our people should be seeking out of the priest's mouth. Are the priests teaching that we should keep God's laws today? They, they brainwash us into believing that God's laws are done away with. They brainwash us into believing that God loves everybody. When God only loves the children of Israel. Loves his people. The so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. I'm going to ask you a question. What is your nationality, brother? I mean, I really didn't believe in all that. I found you, know? Okay. God is good. Don't get me wrong, you know? What is good? I mean, life itself. Let me show you what's good according to the Bible, right? Bring it on. If any man speak, let him speak as the as the um, oracles of God, right? Hey, how you doing, sister? Can I ask you a question? What is good, sis? Yeah, what is good? Life is good? Can we give you the definition of good according to God's laws? Yes. I'm going to show you what good is according to the Bible. Read. What's your name, sis? Terry. Terry, how you doing? Good. Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy. It says, wherefore God's law, statutes, and commandments is holy. Meaning it's separate. Read. Then the commandments holy uh -huh. and just uh -huh. and good. God's law, statutes, and commandments are what's good. And that's what's going to save our people from the captivity that we're in now. Is if we turn back to God's laws. Right. We're being afflicted as a people because we went away from him. Get Hosea 5 and 15. Our oppression, our affliction is a tool used by the Most High for us to seek him. Right. For us to say, oh Lord, what is going on? So we can start the journey on searching for who our God is and who we are so we can return to him. Read. Hosea chapter 5 and verse 15. Yeah. You know, I will go and return to my place. So the Bible is telling, the Most High God is saying, I will go. And return to my place. I will no longer be in the midst of my people here. I will turn my back on my people. Read. Till they acknowledge their offense. Until they acknowledge that they went away from his laws. Till they acknowledge that they have offended the most high God by not doing what God has commanded us to do. Right. right. And taking our rightful place on this earth. Read. And seek my face. And seek his face. How do we seek his face? We read and study the Bible. You understand? We ask questions about the scriptures. Just like you ask questions about that, that picture right there. That's seeking the most high God's face. Wait. In their affliction. In their what? Affliction. In their what? Affliction. The Bible is telling you in their affliction. In them being diseased at the highest rates on earth. That's right. In them being, being filling up the prison houses. Bring it up. In them being shut down in the street by their own people and their oppressors. In their what? In their affliction. Right. They will seek me early. That's when you return to God. You see the hardcore criminal. He gets locked up in jail. The first thing he does, oh God, please help me. Bring it on. What do you think that is? I don't pray. I don't pray. I don't pray. I ain't praying just because I'm in a situation. Uh huh. So I don't pray. I don't like when I do pray. Mm -hmm. See, people underestimate the prayers. You know. They underestimate the power of prayers, but is God going to hear for something they, they, Listen, they already got? It. Is God going to hear your prayers if you're disobedient to him? I'm asking you. If, is God, hey, how you doing, sis? Real quick before you walk off. Is God going to hear your prayers if you're not doing what God wants you to do? No, this is like if you have a child and you tell your child to do something, but they want you, your child wants you to go buy the next video game. But you tell them to go wash the dishes. They say, no, mama, I'm not going to wash them dishes. Are you going to give that child that video? Are you going to listen to that child? So my question is, is God going to listen to you if you're not doing what he wants you to do? The Bible tells you that. Well, read that. John chapter 9 and verse 31. Bring it on. Oh. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. God does what? Heareth not sinners. The most high God does not hear sinners. <laughs> That's the reason why the prophets are out here today to teach the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans who they are and where they went off, where we're going off as a people, so that we can return to God, he can start hearing our prayers, so that we can repent. Give me Romans 7 and 7. Bring it up! Because the laws, the laws is not something that we just woke up knowing. 
We had to learn that thing. And we, we had to learn what sin is first before we started walking in God's ways. Pray, read that. Romans chapter 7 and verse 7. Yeah. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Is the knowledge of God's law a sin? Read. God forbid. Paul is saying no. The knowledge of God's law, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not a sin to get the knowledge of the most high God's laws. Read. Why? Why? Read. Nay. I had not known sin. Paul saying, I did not know that I was in sin. I did not know what sin is, but what? But by the law. But by knowing what God's law says. Yeah. You know, so how are you supposed to know God's laws if you don't have men coming out here to teach you what the laws is so that you can then turn your feet to God? Right. How are you going to know what God's laws is? Read. For I had not known lust. Paul said, I did not know lust. Until what? Except the law had said, except the laws that's written in this Bible has said, Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not covet. So that's what we're out here to do. Bring God's laws, statutes, and commandments to God's chosen people to get them out of the situations that they're in now. That's right. Right. To stop the free HIV testing because we're keeping God's laws. We don't have to worry about that issue. You understand that? We don't have to worry about that if we keep God's laws. I'm going to show you what God's law says about sexual promiscuity. Because that's what we need to be teaching. You understand? That is the end result of us walking away from God's laws. As a matter of fact, we're going to start off with that. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Read. What we're seeing is the end result of our people walking away from God's laws. That's what we're seeing. 28 and 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. If the Most High God is saying, if we did not keep his commandments, that all these curses, these great evil things, was going to come upon us and overtake us as a people. What is that curse that we're referring to? Verse 61. Verse 61. Verse 61. Also, every sickness, every what? Every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law. Every sickness and every plague which is not written in this Bible. HIV, chlamydia, gonorrhea, herpes, cancer, uh, gout. All those, all those sicknesses and plagues that are not written in this book of the law is going to do what? Them Will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed? Then will the Lord bring upon us until we be destroyed. So the Most High God is dealing with us now. He's afflicting us now. He's doing those things to us now to wake us the hell up so that we can seek Him. You understand? God's law tells us that marriage is honorable and all. God's law tells us that there should be no whore in the daughters of Israel. God knows, matter of fact, instead of me quoting it, let's read that thing so that you can believe it for yourself, right? Give me marriage is honorable and all. Matthew, You know? Matthew, Hebrews 13. We're going to show what God says about sexual promiscuity. Read. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Go ahead. Marriage is honorable and all. The most High God says that marriage is honorable and all. He didn't say boyfriend and girlfriend. He didn't say at the age of 13 you're able to go out on dates and you date a senior in high school and what y'all doing? You're having sex in the back of the car. You you yeah. you're telling your mother you go into the bus, but yet you going over to, to um Thomas House you know, yeah. before you go to school. You doing all those things. All those things is going on in our community. Well, what does God say again? Read it from the top. Bring it up. Marriage is honorable and all. Marriage is honorable and all. What race of people? What race of people lives by the term baby mama and baby daddy? Bring it up. What nation of people? Does the so-called white man do that? Does the so-called Arab man do that? Bring it up. Does the China man do that? No, our people go by baby mama and baby daddy. That's why we have the highest age rate on the planet Earth. Yes, right. as a people. Read it again. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Marriage is honorable at all. Marriage is honorable to God. You lie down with that sister, you marry her, and she becomes the only sister that you deal with for the rest of your life. That's right. You lie down with that man, and he becomes your husband, 
and he becomes the only brother that you lie with for the rest of your life. That's, that's, right. that's what God believes in. Right. And if you live by that, you don't have to worry about a free HIV test. You wouldn't have to worry about gonorrhea, syphilis, chlamydia, all those different things. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.